Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk about derivatives of trig functions. And uh, we're going to start with two important limits that we need to know today in order to figure out the limits of trig functions. And the first one is the limit as h goes to 0 of sine of h over h. And uh, this limit is equal to 1. Now, there are several ways that I could go through proving this to you. One is I could say, well, why don't you graph this function, sine of h over h, and look at the graph yourself, and you say, what does it look like that limit is? And I think you'll find that that limit looks like it's going to 1. Uh, another way that we could do this if we wanted to do it the more formal proof-based way is we could use an argument with the unit circles, the unit circle and triangles inside the unit circle, and we could actually make an argument that this limit is equal to 1. I'm not going to do that proof right now. It's a great proof to read, and I would advise take your calculus book, read the proof in your calculus book that this limit is equal to 1. Uh, that's a really important proof to have some exposure to. So go ahead and, and take maybe a second right now and look in your calculus text and read over the proof of this limit. Okay, once you've proved this limit, this one is pretty easy to prove from it by just multiplying the top and bottom of this fraction by <coughs> um, cosine of h plus 1 over cosine of h plus 1, and then you can f show that this limit is 0. Okay. Uh, Assuming that we've established that fact and that you've gone through and actually read the proof of this limit so that you're convinced that that actually is true, let's go through and see how do you show what the derivatives are of the different trigonometric functions. Let's start with sine of x. Okay, so let's take f of x is equal to sine of x. And remember, any time that we don't know what a derivative is, how do we compute it? Well, we have to go back to the actual definition of the derivative. So that's what I'm going to do right now, is I'm going to go back and I'm going to say, okay, what's the definition? The definition says that f prime of x is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Now let's fill in what we know that f of x plus h and f of x are, all right? So let's rewrite. This is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h, but that's sine of x plus h minus f of x, which is minus sine x, all over h. Now, we can use a trig identity right here for the sign of the addition of two, if you want to consider those angles or two values, but we can rewrite this using a trig identity, and this is the limit as h goes to zero of sine of x times cosine of h plus cosine of x times sine of h Mo and then, uh, so that's breaking this one up by our trig identity. And then we've got minus sine of x all over h. All right, notice that uh, we have something in common here between this term, sine x, cosine h, and this one, minus sine x. There's a sine x in both of those. So let's put those two terms together and break this up into two fractions. If I do, I get the following. I get the limit as h goes to 0 of, remember I'm taking this one and this one, and I'm going to factor out sine of x. So if I factor out sine of x from this term and this term, then I get a sine x times What's left over? Well, I have a cosine h minus 1. So I get cosine h minus 1 over h. I'm taking the limit of all of this stuff. What's left over? 
all that's left is cosine x sine h over h, which I could write as cosine x times sine h over h. All right, so now let's distribute this limit. The limit can go across to sum. The limit can go across products. So I can rewrite this thing. Let me do it very quickly. And I get, this is equal to the limit, it's h goes to zero, of sine of x times the limit as h goes to zero of cosine of h minus one over h uh, plus the limit as h goes to zero of cosine x times the limit as h goes to zero of sine of h over h. Now, this limit, limit as h goes to 0 of cosine h minus 1 over h, that's one of the two limits that I told you were important. And we know that this limit is 0. What's the limit as h goes to 0 of sine of x? Well, there are no h's here, so that's just sine of x. So we get sine of x times, we know this limit, it's 0, plus... Similarly, cosine of x has no h's, so this is just cosine of x times limit as h goes to 0 of sine h over h. That's the other important limit that I needed to know, and the answer is 1. So this ends up being cosine of x. In other words, the derivative of the function sine of x is cosine of x. So let me write this down. So if f of x equals sine x, then f prime of x is cosine of x. And we have the derivative of our first trig function. Now, the second one is very similar in proof. I'm not going to go through the whole thing again, uh, so let me just write down for you the derivative of cosine of x. And I could prove it almost exactly the same as the derivative for sine of x, but if f of x is equal to cosine of x, then we have that f prime of x is equal to, it ends up that it's negative sine of x. Okay, so we have the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, and the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. All right, so now let's move on and let's think about the derivative of our third trigonometric function, and that is tangent. Okay, so let's look at f of x is equal to tangent of x. And it's going to be helpful for us in this case to remember that tangent of x is actually sine of x over the cosine of x. But this is a quotient of two functions that I know the derivative of. So I can use the quotient rule to find the derivative. So f prime of x is going to be the bottom, which is cosine of x, times the derivative of what's on top. But the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. So I get cosine of x minus what's on top, sine of x, times the derivative of what's on the bottom. The derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x. So times minus sine x all over the bottom, which is cosine of x, quantity squared. Okay, let's think about this for a second. So I've got a negative times a negative, but that makes it positive. So I've got cosine squared 
of x plus sine squared of x all over cosine squared of x. But you'll remember that sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is always equal to 1. So this is just 1 over cosine squared of x. But 1 over cosine of x is the same thing as secant of x. So we could just write this as secant squared of x. And that's our answer. So we have that the derivative of tangent of x is secant squared of x. And let me write that down. So if f of x is equal to tangent of x, then f prime of x is equal to secant squared of x. All right? Now, we could do a, a very similar argument for cotangent of x. I'm not going to do that because cotangent is just cosine of x over sine of x. So if we did the same thing, we'd get that if f of x is equal to cotangent of x, then f prime of x would be equal to negative cosecant, oops, cosecant squared of x. And that just leaves two more, and that is secant and cosecant. So what are the derivatives of secant and cosecant? Let's start with the derivative of secant. So if f of x is equal to secant of x, well remember that secant of x is the same as 1 over the cosine of x, which is a quotient of two things that I know the derivative of. So I could just use the quotient rule. So let's do it. And so I get that f prime of x is equal to, I always write the bottom first, so I get cosine of x times the derivative of what's on top, but the derivative of 1 is 0, minus the top, which is 1, times the derivative of cosine of x, which is negative sine of x, all over the bottom, cosine of x, quantity squared. Rewriting this, this all cancels because there's a zero. Uh, and I get minus 1 times minus sine of x, so I get sine of x divided by cosine squared of x. Which is the answer, but there's usually a different form we write it in. Because this is sine x over cosine x times 1 over cosine of x. And sine over cosine of x is otherwise known as tangent of x. And 1 over cosine of x is known as secant of x. And that's my answer right here. So what does that give me? That gives me that if We have if um, f of x is equal to uh, secant of x, then f prime of x is equal to tangent x secant x. And similarly, if f of x is cosecant of x, then f prime of x is going to be uh, negative cotangent x cosecant of x. And now we have derivatives for every one of our trigon trigonometric functions.